Chapter 5, Part 8 This jeep was getting to be a literal pain in the ass. I pushed the pedal to the metal. Safe driving and traffic laws, ignored. People and cars congesting the road, ignored. Whatever the president was saying over in the passenger's seat, ignored. Whatever the vice president and treasurer were saying in the back seat, ignored. I decided to just ignore it all. Though, Alba's condition, that I still cared about. What was my choice? Don't read the despair novel. Even though I'd made the choice not to read the goddamn piece of shit despair novel yet, same as before, I still wanted to find a hope and a conclusion that I could call my own. I wanted to find the best ending. So I ripped that despair novel apart and I threw it on the ground. The MRS sat back and watched, laughing. As you can see, they just accepted it. We don't accept nothing. The vice president thrust a finger forward. We're testing you. How are you going to find hope when you don't have any talent and you won't even read the despair novel? Woohoo! It's the final trial, heart pounding. That's a nice big dollop of missions to complete because not only do you have to find your hope, but you also have to save a girl from the brink of death. The treasurer's gaze drifted towards the luggage rack. I checked the rearview mirror too, but fortunately or unfortunately, I couldn't see Alba from here. Satomi Alba's gonna die if you're not careful, the vice president sneered. Personally though, I already saw tons of people die so far this time. She's bleeding a lot, huh? Oh well, that's easy, she's gonna die any minute now. If he's annoying you, feel free to kill him off, quipped the president. Look, here's where I put the secret weapons. He opened up the dashboard, where all kinds of survival knives and ice picks and other dangerous weapons were hiding. All the tools of the trade you could ever need to hurt or kill someone. What a waste of space, who needs that stuff? The kind of person who'd be satisfied with that kind of thing is the same person who'd read the despair novel. I was just driving this jeep towards hope. If speeding off on a stolen bike is something you can get away with as a kid, that by God, speeding off in a jeep someone gave me for free was going to be my right as a grown-ass adult. Part 9 The island wasn't that big, but I was hiding on it. I couldn't see the chief or can I, and I wasn't being pursued by anyone else either. Maybe they overlooked me, or maybe they were just toying with me. But all I could do was... not to cooperate with the Hasegawa Research Institute. There should be some kind of rule against providing a choice with such an obvious answer, and yet even so, I was trying to find a hope and a conclusion that I could call my own. I was trying to find the best ending. So I used Borgs to find the optimal escape route, and run across the campus to conceal myself from sight. Borgs was fully functional, but it still wasn't equipped to tell me how to flee an unfamiliar island from unfamiliar people. Or rather, Borgs was a tool developed to facilitate note-taking for a journey under the midnight sun, not a foolproof ultimate survival tool. The worst incident in the Togami family history, however, now that had been survival. Byaki Osama used the full extent of his talent to challenge the riddles before him, and I wrote Journey Under the Midnight Sun while coughing up blood. People talk a lot about giving your brain a workout, but from what I've realised from those days, known as the incident, is just how much work it is to put what you've seen and experienced into words. Being a writer is survival too. What was I talking about again? My brain's kinda... Uh, it's not working right. Uh, I wonder what Byakuya Summer is doing. Oh, right, he's dead. He, he died and now he's dead. What am I doing? Okay, uh, then... Uh, I guess for starters I should escape? How? I got in here via a human rocket ship, but that had been a one-way trip and it didn't seem like there was a way off the island other than the single bridge hanging into the mainland. I just had to go for it. Crossing the bridge was the only way. To put it in abstract terms, I disappeared into the darkness and its subtle western tones from time to time relying on the light of the moon to guide my footsteps. There was no sign of anyone else on the island. I couldn't tell if they were off throwing themselves into the protests or if they were shut up in their houses in fear or if there was some other reason for it. Even before I got tired out from running, my breathing became erratic from anxiety and loneliness and the fact that Byakuya Sama wasn't there anymore. A strange rasping noise leaked out from inside my throat. 
I hated how the ink leaked out of my fountain pen whenever I ran two. I tried switching to ballpoint pens and pencils for a while, but only the ink from a fountain pen could get comfortable with the paper. Only blue-black ink. Only blue ink. Oh, brain. Do your best brain. Do your best brain of mine. Now here's a problem. It's problem time. If Byakuya Sama isn't around anymore, if Byakuya Sama wound up dead, what should I do about Journey Under the Midnight Sun? Now that I think about it, I don't know how Shinsho Koki wrapped everything up. I don't know how many pages it took to end after the part where Nobunaga is carelessly killed at Honoji. <laughs> Yakiya Summer. Part 10. I finally made it across the traffic jam to the nearest city, but there was just another traffic jam on the way to the hospital. Were they bringing in survivors from the satellite crash? Or was it that another outrageous situation was blowing up without my knowledge? <sighs> well, the important thing was just to not give a shit. I parked the jeep right in the middle of the road and dashed into the hospital by foot. I guess I should say it was no surprise that there were a ton of casualties lolling about. It looked like the inside of a field hospital, although I'd never seen one in person to say so for sure. It was so packed with people with injuries on their arms and legs or even in more vital places than that that I couldn't even put my foot down without stepping on one. There were doctors there, but they all looked like they had their hands full. Even if I gently set Alba down in the hospital, her chances of receiving any medical attention now were quite low. I could try using threats, but that would just get me smacked down by security. I left the hospital in a rage. They must have been able to tell that I'd had no luck. The president shrugged his shoulders, almost as if in sympathy. I kept driving after that, and checked in at the hospitals along the way but all the beds were all full of casualties, and if not, there were signs up saying that they were closed temporarily. What the hell? What kind of plot development is this? I finally started going out to find my hope like I was supposed to. So why wasn't the world doing its part in return? <sighs> Nothing ever goes your way. It's just the same as it's always been. I could almost see the outside saying that, bursting into laughter. In the end, I couldn't find any open hospitals. What will you do? The president asked me. How are you going to bring this battle to its close? I don't think driving recklessly is going to accomplish very much. I so hate guys like this though, snorted the vice president. It's like, you know, some guys will just lose it all of a sudden, see it all the time. They're all calm and peaceful and then they snap and do a 180. I hate that. Oh, you mean like the Bakayoro series? I have no clue what you're talking about. Yoshomitsu Marita? Pride of Japan? Well, anyway, I don't know how you guys who keep losing all the time always end up becoming the crazy ones and shocking everyone. That's not exactly a revolutionary opinion, Vice President. <laughs> Just a bunch of idiots yapping. But I felt pretty less as fair about it, so... To speak. Do as you like. Now that I'm giving up looking on for city hospitals, I'd switch my focus to more local private practitioners. As I drove down the highway for a bit, I could see the airport far in the distance. Oh, the airport. The airport? Oh. I had never had as strong or passionate feelings about the word airport as I did now. Airport? A place to bring us somewhere that wasn't here. Uh, and the place where Alba and I had been planning on going in the first place. Emphasis on the had been. Are you sure this is the road you want to take? Asked the president. I don't think even for a second that you're going to get yourself out of this situation. Don't ask me. What are you even driving for exactly? For yourself? For the idol? Either way, that looks like a boring way to go. Don't ask me. Well, don't say that, Prez. The more unpopular a guy is, the more he's going to want to cling to the first love he gets his hands on. There's this one weirdo who keeps talking about my friend about some badass moment way back in preschool. <laughs> Cause you're a self-styled popular guy, right, Vice Prez? What do you mean self-styled? I'm freaking hot. I'm so popular that come chocolate season, I'm gonna get myself a truck to carry all that. Is it true you still have the chocolate I gave you in the fridge? Huh? Whenever we get chocolate from you. Hey, Teach, can I make a common Mickey joke? Hell no, and I'll seriously even take the Tyrol Choco, so just give me something next year. 
Oh, what a sudden confession. It's not a freaking confession. Ah, oh, you want to see my sports bra? Yes, please, I beg of you. Having a bunch of rowdy school kids around made it feel like I was driving through downpour. Listening to their young voices was making something sink inside my stomach. A criminy, melancholy, frustration. The release of negative energy made my thoughts and feelings and reality all mixed up. I could feel the puppet strings controlling my body get tangled. I felt my head get dizzy. My eyes felt tired. I didn't know what time of the year or time of day it was. I wasn't sure how old I was or where I was or w whether it was day or night, but the one thing I did know is that despite all this, everything outside me was counting on it just fine. But ain't, ain't that how it always goes? So a, a woman was walking down the one lane road. Her, her face was familiar? Uh, back when I was living my merry life as a mole, I wasted all my time looking up things about Hope's Peak Academy. Her face had shown up in the results, therefore she was a Hope's Peak Academy student. With an unhealthy complexion on her face, the woman said, Yikes. Scary, what's with her? Hmm. Hope? Hope. Son of a bitch. Before I knew it, I'd stepped on the gas and rear-ended the Hope's Peak Academy woman. I'd fucked the shit out of that Hope ass. She was thrown off into the riverside, looking as vulgar as the porn mag as she was blown away. I burst into laughter, but the MRS was so shocked that I'd just run over a student from the main course without any warning. Hey now, hey now, why, why are you acting all surprised? If you didn't want me doing something like this, you wouldn't have tried to make me read the despair novel. The world hadn't made me crazy. I'm not going to kill anyone. And when it came to a Hope's Peak student, you're an exception, motherfucker. I hopped out of the jeep and watched her convulsing in pain, my eyes devoid of all emotion. At least I felt like there were. She was moaning. That was fun. No, that was a lie. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. I stepped on her head. I stepped hard enough that the word grind had never felt more appropriate and vivid. Right down to the sound of the word itself. Grind, 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 grind. <sighs> I was disappointed that she just gave an average scream in response. The fuck did she think she was doing? Wasn't she supposed to be super high school level? I was kind of offended. I couldn't forgive her. If you have a talent, then the least you can do is have some kind of extraordinary scream. Like, Mew or Pew Pew! I don't fucking know, just something. Next I try stepping on her stomach again and 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 again. She spat out a single spew of blood mixed with vomit. But I still didn't stop. I stepped again and 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 again. I could feel her organs being crushed underfoot. It was such a sweet, sweet bliss. Oh, now that I think about it, don't we have a knife? I took the survival knife from the dashboard and with that single moment of hesitation, stabbed it into her arm. It was all too easy to do, so I jabbed in the knife again and again and again and again. Crunch, 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 crunch. Like when you buy shaved ice at the convenience store, it's all frozen together until you eat it. Crunch, 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 crunch. I kept on stabbing. I cut off flesh, I cut off muscle, I cut off fingers. Her arm was like a mole caught in a trap, covered in blood and covered in holes. Fucking ridiculous. You have a talent, but you get shanked the same as anyone else. Fucking ridiculous. The blades of salt soiled her arm with a greasy blood. Oh man, that's filthy. Oh gross, I can't believe even a super high school level student has the same red blood as me. And it still feels this filthy when it's spilled. I grabbed hold of her wrecked arm. I was now missing muscle and flesh and fingers and pulled with all my strength. With an audible rip after some resistance, I plucked out her arm like a vegetable next to slit that pale throat of hers. I'll kill you. As soon as I thought that, she reached out her remaining arm and... Did she just steal my knife? Whoa, wait. Immediately pulled back my hand. But the attack came even faster. She kicked up between my legs. A splitting pain coursed through my balls and then through my whole body. 
It was so painful that I couldn't stay upright and my body just fell forward. She caught me and then tossed me backwards over her head like a judo throw. The world turned upside down, my head hit the ground and I blacked out. I only lost consciousness for a few seconds, but in those few seconds the situation had flipped completely. I was collapsed while she stood over me. Huh? Is this where it ends? My time in this mortal coil? She glared at me. There was a huge amount of blood flowing from where her arm had been torn off, and the mix of blood and vomit teased out from the corners of her lips, her body covered in wounds, and yet she had indescribable power. Her remaining arm grabbed me by the neck, pulling up my body. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. My trachea constricted with a squeeze. Squeeze. I couldn't breathe. Squeeze. I became lightheaded from all the squeezing. My vision grew dim with a squeeze, and there was a terrible squeezing ringing in my ears. I heard that sound and was crestfallen to know that it came from my own throat. I was drawing closer to a mortal crisis, and yet all I could do was make such a pointless sound. I felt the despair. What is this? She strangled me. What is this? What is this? Do you think you could just do this to someone's arm? What is this? Who is this? Even if I had wanted to answer, she was strangling me too much for me to use my voice. The best I could do was let out a croak from my throat. Ah, is this it? My vision grew hazy and my consciousness drifted far away. My thoughts became indistinct. I lost myself. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, 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 name yourself. I'm... Uh, uh, Who are you? What do you want? Uh, I'm... Suzuhiko Otsuki. Part 11 as I work with a start. Oh dear, isn't that strange? What do I mean I work with a start? Shouldn't I have been conscious the whole time? At some point, I had apparently lost consciousness and collapsed right where I stood, and all I could see now was a sky full of stars above me. What could have possibly happened, I wonder? As I tried to sit up and see, something even more incomprehensible happened. Was the whole surrounding area sliced in half? The flowers, the telephone poles, the road signs, the cars, even the pebbles had absolutely everything had been sliced in half. The scenery had been seven to two perfect halves of a whole. I'd learned during the worst incident in the Takami family history, the truth of abnormal situations that I've ended up in. That wouldn't make progress no matter how much I tried to turn it over in my mind. At a time like this, reasoning was pointless. Better use my feet than my head. I tried heading back towards the school. Each and everything I encountered during my nighttime stroll had been split apart. Bugs, twigs, empty cans, bicycles, trash cans, the trash that had been thrown away inside them. Everything was in two equal pieces. Everyone was getting along and going halvesies. An enormous, oppressive foreboding took hold of me and my emotions felt like they were about to crumble into pieces. All I was doing was walking down a flat road, but my breathing became erratic. Not even the wind carried down the Vitava River or a refreshing cool of night could get my heart back in the balance. All I could do was walk one step at a time, putting one foot in front of the other. I finally made it back to the school and learned of how the despair had amplified. The tea set that had been laid out on campus was in two halves. The chief, who had been enjoying her tea time from the Hasegawa Research Institute, had been chopped vertically from the head down. The cut was clean, but her brains and other organs were oozing out into the ground, so it didn't quite work out the way Ikameshi does it. Kanai was dead nearby. Even the umbrella he had been holding was cut in half. But those weren't the only casualties. A large vehicle that hadn't been on the school grounds before, the kind you would call a jeep, had been split apart from within like a display model at an auto factory and dead bodies were strewn about it. Hunks of meat, really. The corpses were wearing Japanese-style school uniforms that really looked out of place in the Czech Republic. Cruelly cut uniforms, human hearts split in two, and limbs that jutted out like young branches were scattered here and there. 
some cookies spilled out from a torn stomach, still not digested. I felt it was something of a wondrous spectacle that among these many body parts rolling around, Byakuya-sama alone, who had been dead from the beginning, was completely unharmed, almost as if he was still living. A sound. That sound, which I couldn't describe as either pleasant or unpleasant in itself, repeated in fixed intervals. For some reason, the stopping and starting of the sound felt disturbing. And then I realised it was the sound of a blade cutting through paper. Cutting paper by the moonlight? Uh, I didn't know that was a thing, even if you were going crazy. All the times that we've had, why don't we try to remember them? I spotted a shadow at the innermost darkness of the campus. When we did this, when we did that, wasn't that fun? The shadow was cutting pages out of a book with a knife. Sing the first verse, and only the first verse, of Memory Album to themselves over and over. Memory Album, lyrics by Toshi Masuko, and composition by Tetsuma Honda. All the times that we have had, why don't we try to remember them? When we did this, when we did that, wasn't that fun. The things that made us happy, and the things that caught our interest. I'll always remember them all the rest of my days. Look, spoke the shadow, ain't that the crescent moon? This is the kind of night that makes you want to spontaneously recite haiku. The sky is blue-black. The pen of the crescent moon writes the song of death. I just listened to him. It's been such a long time. I'm just glad to see you're doing all right. Writing everything down just like you always did. Ah, oh, sorry about that, um. It takes me a while to get into the groove after waking up. I looked to find that my prosthetic arm for my left arm was missing. The hydraulics to move the joints were exposed and with messy red-black oil. But more importantly, what are you doing here? My voice rasped like I'd aged 50 years. I wanted to cry, both from fear and anxiety. And then, just a little bit more than that, from nostalgia. Or, really, I was sure I was going to cry for real any moment now. What kind of question is that? <laughs> the shadow suddenly burst into laughter. Nothing to wonder about here. You should damn well know already. Sorry to keep you hanging. Why, I say, isn't that the former super high school level hitman, all grown up and on the grind, Suzuhiko Otsuki is making his appearance? The shadow Otsuki cast the book in his hands off to the side, cut to pieces. The book was caught by the wind fluttering in the night sky. Hmm, <laughs> ain't this a nice sight? Kind of feels like never tarnishing and never lost the penknife, and they're facing death. You don't think? What are you doing in Frog? I asked, ignoring the tears that were flowing without my consent. What kind of question is that? Part two. <laughs> like I said, there's nothing to wonder about here. I'll go wherever I need to kill a client's target, whether it's the top of Tokyo Tower. Or the top of Mount Everest. That's not what I meant. I hear. You're talking about how it's weird that when it's only been five hours since the World Domination Proclamation, and by all accounts I should still be on the plane right now no matter how fast I move. How much a mistake on your part? Y you were in Prague from the beginning? Correct. Come on, I'm the former super high school level hitman, you know. I know the target before the order even comes in. What? That's it? That can't be the only reason. Oh, really? Why don't you tell me what the reason the super high school level air has for owning an artificial satellite? Or what the reason the super high school level martial artist has for using Shikuchi? In this world, an impressive title is the ultimate get out of justification free card on all its own. Shouldn't you already have gotten with the program on that one, Miss Super High School Level Secretary? <laughs> don't make that face like you don't agree with me. Radio then. 
How about I introduce you to my good friend, the status screen? Let's pull that up right now, shall we? <laughs> Part 12. Number 2711950. Title is Specs. Name Suzuhiko Hotsuki. Class Hitman. Level 91. HP 788. MP 0. Available skills Disruptive Wave nullifies all magic. Falcon Slash allows user to attack twice. Parry. Deflect enemy attack. Avan Strash. See Dino Diboken for details. Ambush. With the X Super High School level Hitman sets a spell, this ability allows the user to identify a target before the order comes in. Afterwards, the user seals away their personality like a mole hiding in its hole and acts the part of a profiled character with motivations and connections that will allow them to approach the target thus getting proximity and guaranteeing the kill. This user may possess a meta perspective if it will assist them in approaching the target. They do not have qualms about deceiving the reader. Part 13 So basically, I was already in the Czech Republic, not Japan. You blind fucking blockheads just didn't notice. I was using my talent at 100% right from the get-go. Once I noted that the Byakuya-kun would be the next target before he could make his way to the Czech Republic, I beat him to the punch and hopped on a flight to the nature-rich region of Sheshki Raj, the Bohemian Paradise, where I switched personalities and went to seclude myself. This is the truth! Lutsky <laughs> laughed loudly, dancing around for no reason. Stamp, 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 stamp. A voice? A boy in a school uniform crawled out, pushing aside his auto parts and human viscera alike. Ha! Huh. I missed one. Hmm. Am I way too groggy to do my work properly when I first wake up? Otsuki raised his knife. W what's going on? Haha, ha, whoopsie! See, my memories from alternate personalities just slip right out of my head. No matter how big an impact it has, you forget the dream and once you open your eyes, right? So you know, Toodles, man of my dreams. The, the anomaly was you? The boy's voice shook. When we were in the midst of making the locked rooms in that town, we'd received word that some of our comrades had been killed, but it was you? Hmm, I don't remember that, but when I talk to people I have a previously established relationship with, or when my life is in danger, I automatically switch personalities. <laughs> What's so funny? No. What? I just remembered something that made me laugh. Hatsuki stamped his feet in another little dance. Ah, oh, you were one of those home speak affiliate school clowns, weren't you? Hey, 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 hey! How's it feel? How's it feel to know that the guy you talk to so much shit about used to be the actual super high school level hitman? He stayed silent. He thought I was just some dumb old grown-up, but it turns out I was a dumb old grown-up that was overflowing with talent! Once again, he stayed silent. Speechless, I take it! Fair enough, fair enough. The me from back then. The whole existence of that me was a bald-faced lie. The doom and gloom you heard from me seemed plausible, but as it turns out, I came up with it on the spot in about mm, maybe three minutes, and it doesn't amount to anything more than that. Everyone who was annoyed by me, everyone who sympathised with me, everyone who warned me, everyone who requested something of me. All right. Good work, everyone. Good hustle. Did you have fun? Maybe you should have focused a little more on pulling your own lives together instead of worrying about mine. <laughs> the idol. Hmm? What, what about the idol? Oh, she said she was on a trip to mend her broken heart, but I think she was lying. Thank goodness. It seems as you haven't forgotten about her. Ha, oh, that don't matter to me. Lusky swung his knife back down, cutting the boy's body in perfect two pieces, like it was a well done magic trick. Oh, I'm just gonna kill her anyway, so that don't matter to me. He kicked the jeep as he spoke. A cute girl fell out of the luggage compartment. Her stomach was wounded and she looked more dead than asleep, but she was still alive. Lusky looked down at the girl and raised his knife a second time. Wait! I cried. What else was I supposed to do? Hmm, I'm waiting. 
Hotsuki said obediently. Oh, so what are you gonna do? It doesn't matter, just she's still alive, so don't kill her. Oh, that's a real weird thing to say. You realize that? You get why? <laughs> never mind me. And never mind what I said. Ha <laughs> ha what a secretary. Hotsuki narrowed one eye. You listening? I'm gonna start with the super basic stuff. Uh, but I'm the X super high school level hitman. It has the X tacked on in front of it. But what I do is the same as it's always been. I'm always, always been a hitman. <laughs> what about it? Well, even after graduating from Host Pick Academy, all I've been doing is killing this way. I handle a blade so skillfully because I'm overflowing with talent as a hitman. So I can't just get a new job as a cook or a hairdresser. We're bound by talent, and so all we can do is live within that talent. I... Oh, same goes for you. My goddamn adorable little sister, said Otsuki. Oh, all you can fucking do is live as the super high school level secretary. Isn't that right, Blue Ink? Isn't that right, Shinobu Tagami, Byakuya Tagami's big sister? Part 14. Is that all you have to say? Part 15. Yakuya Sama stood. Even though it was the middle of the night, his hair shone with the light of the moon, and his blue eyes were practically luminescent with the overwhelming force of his confidence, so that Byakuya Sama himself appeared to be sparkling. Byakuya Sama pushed up his glasses, quickly surveying the surrounding hellish landscape. Then he sighed as if bored and shrugged, which only cemented that interpretation. Apparently, Witnessing the entropic decay of a story, missing its lead character left him severely irritated. Oh wait, that means... Don't be disgusting. Are you trying to be Fukawa? But you're supposed to be dead. You didn't notice? Why do you think I gave you Borgs? Atagami does not die. That's all there is to it. Byakuya Sama turned his nails against his own neck, peeling off his skin. As he did, he revealed another layer of skin underneath, as well as the small pouch attached to the discarded fake skin. The construction is similar to the Gola de Prete. Do you th really think that I would drink anything even remotely like a truth serum? So then, I haven't told those Hasegawa Research Institute buffoons anything. There's no need for us to let the world know about the secret of the Takami family's prosperity, or the worst incident in the Takami family history. Byakuya sama I rushed over towards Byakuya sama like a young maiden going in for an embrace. Were you crying? Ah! But my pace slowed down when I was struck by guilt. If you came here to rescue me, you were too late. I apologize. <laughs> These are bent. Gekyo Sama tossed his glasses off to the side. Hand me a new pair. Oh, right away, sir. I took out a new pair of glasses immediately. So, what are you going to do? Pardon? Didn't you come here to rescue me? I'm asking you what your plan is going forward. Uh, that's uh, do not hesitate without my permission. I, I apologize, my escape plan is completely blank. <laughs> a blank page. You're slacking in your duties as a secretary. Shink, 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 came the sound of metal scraping against metal. At some point, Otsuki had gotten his hand on two kukri knives. Yoo-hoo, yucky -yuck You wouldn't wake up through all that, so uh, I was assuming you were trying to wait it out by pretending to be asleep. <laughs> First, he had to get a laugh out of the way. Oh, come on. Don't go making that face. Just because my specialty is knives and not a more distinctive signature weapon. Sure, there may be people in this world who fight with scissors or staplers or whatever the other miscellaneous office products that kids are using these days, but what do you think, I'm in grade school or something? I can legally vote, you know. He said, licking one of his knives in a move that was incredibly trite. Uh, and he probably knew it and was doing that ironically. Ah, the former super high school level rock climber Hitomoshi Sarugi was in the same sort of assassination business as me. And what do you think his weapon was? His fingers! He used his fingers! That's a whole nother level of cliché. 
Or what if the super high school level masseuse wanted to be a hitman? Someone will have already taken their character niche, right? Knives are really the best option, right? I mean, we're gonna find about all that soon enough, right? With me around, it seems the world has reached new heights of chaos. Bekyo Samo adjusts his glasses. The Council of Global Controllers has been obliterated. My imposter remains unvanquished. Students of my school have been operating in the shadows. The Hasegara Research Institute has paid me a visit. And who isn't after the Kudan? And now you're here. Ah, <laughs> whatever, it's fine. It'd be more of a problem if everything was resolved in Volume 1. Is this the despair novel? Becky Summer picked up the stray scrap of paper at his feet. What's it doing here? Ah, oh, that bunch of brats I killed had it. Ah, oh, pretty sure it had something to do with Hose Peak. Ah, uh, no, I don't know, it's totally slipped my mind by now. The despair novel is thick on the ground and it spreads the despair disease. It turns all to despair. Pyakusama ripped up the scrap of paper further, throwing it away. It's up to me to govern. Now that the world is showing its terminal symptoms, it's up to me to take on the responsibility of management. It's up to me to take over the world. And so the option came. He chose to take over the world. Byakuya Sama, who had once had no interest in world domination, had changed his answer. It was an incident. It was a plot twist. It was a revolution. It was bliss. Bliss? For whom? For me, of course. I dreamed of a world under Byakuya Sama's control. And I had hoped for a world that played by Byakuya Sama's rules ever since that day. Ha ha ha, world domination, huh? Well, ain't that nice. It's good for kids to dream big, you know. Otsuki drew nearer with long strides and a rapid pace, knives at the ready. And it's a grown up's job to crush a kid's dreams! <laughs> Fall back, said Byakuya Sama, walking towards Otsuki. I couldn't find the words to call out after him after he grew further and further away, so all I could do was watch these two men on their collision course. Ah, oh, Byakuya-kun, you're just going to let me close this gap. Hmm, <laughs> I could ask the same of you. You sure you don't want to run? Otsuki raised his knives overhead. You know how big the difference is in our power level, right? You're going to get slaughtered by the time you get to the next page. I won't lose. I'll stake the Takami name on that. That's right. There's no way he would lose. Absolutely not. Fundamentally. Back then. Right now. And from now on. He will win. He will win and win and keep winning. Byakuya Sama is God. Coda. Despair High School. Ding dong dang dong ding dong dang dong ding dong dang dong ding dong dang dong Chimes rang out as we approached midnight. The next thing I knew, the whole island seemed to shake violently, and cracks ran down the walls of the school before they burst open. Surely I was hallucinating this. That is to say, behind the crumbled walls, there was another building that had been painted half black and half white. There were gigantic lights installed on the left that looked like eyes. A panda? Some kind of bear? Whatever it was, the unabashedly impractical, super surreal scene left me at a loss for words. I was I supposed to write about this thing in Journey Under the Midnight Sun? <laughs> oh, what's that? Oscar even forgot about his raised knife, looking up at the structure that had suddenly appeared. That's more tasteless than an Ibaraki love hotel! Actually, is it really okay to set all the stakes and expectations this high? Has mankind learned nothing from the Folly of the Spec series? Just as I was about to fire back with literally no one watched those movies, I felt a sudden tug on my clothes. Huh? And then, as if gravity had stopped functioning normally, huh? I flew into the sky. The ground grew further and further away and Byakuya Sama and Otsuki smaller and smaller as the moon rapidly approached. This was the first time in my life I'd ever seen the moon from this close. It was beautiful, but also not the time to be zoning out and even considering it. Now my body was tugged towards the rooftop of the building, and I was dragged right down onto my rear end. Sunny san recovery complete! I raised my head to see Soda-san in an unfamiliar outfit, 
operating a machine that looked like some kind of fishing rod monster, greeting me with a Yo! Greetings to you, Bluig san, or rather Shinobu Tagami san. Princess Sonia was there too, also in an unfamiliar outfit, standing in front of me on the roof, observing my bewilderment, her hair flapping in the strong winds. Uh, Sonia san, what exactly. How do you like our makeover? Your takeover? I mean, makeover? Our Hope's Peak uniforms were dreadfully tacky as shit. But as you see, these uniforms are made by my personal designer. They have a quite a bit more swag. How do you like them? Are the despair vibes coming through? Despair? The Despair High School is now open for enrollment. Princess Sonia's voice echoed with her proclamation, and the island shook a second time. It was as if the school grounds were a sandbox with children kicking around the sand from inside as a cloud of dust spread over the entire area. Bekyo Sama and Otsuki from view. At last a school gate appeared, as if rejecting the two there. What is this thing? I turned to Princess Sonia for an explanation. Hey, what is this, Sonia-san? What have you been doing this whole time? I don't get it. There was a job posting online. Excuse me? And now let us all join together to sing the school song. As Princess Sonia spoke, two girls appeared from behind her. Soda-san ran over too and the four of them stood in a row, turning their backs to me. It was almost like they were showing themselves to the world. It wasn't long until the speakers on the roof began to play the melody to the famous Radio Calisthenics song at a booming volume. Despite my continued bewilderment, the four of them loudly sang their so-called school song with modified lyrics. Brand new night has graced us once again. A night full of despair. Now we open up our hearts to joyfulness with despair close overhead. Hear despair's voice in your ears as you open your healthy heart to this wind that is blowing through fragrant and sweet. That's despair, despair, despair. This brand new night has something underneath A glittering despair Stretch your arms and your legs and get out on your feet Stamp the earth refreshingly Feel despair there by your side As you stretch out your healthy limbs Reaching out across all this expansive earth That's despair, despair, despair I'm the Despair High School Level Princess! Sonia, never mind. I'm the Despair High School Level Mechanic, Kazuichi Soda. I'm the Despair High School Level Brother Complex, Sana Kagami. And I'm the Despair High School Level Split Personality, Naomi Kagami. Once the four of them were done with their introductions, another distinctive voice came from the speakers. And I am the Despair High School Level Air, Byakuya Tagami. Get out here! I shout out the speakers. What's going on here? You're a hostage, Shinobu Tagami. I already know that you're the super high school level imposter. You can't play the trickster anymore. You're just a clown. I've been a clown from the start. And you still haven't revealed my true identity, have you? Show yourself. It's better if you don't see, said the fake, before addressing the Byakuya Sama on the ground. You can hear me, can't you? I have your dear sister and your dear past in my custody. If you want them back, then come and get them. Mr. Original. I activated Borgs amidst my despair. I zoomed in on Byakuya Sama to see his unperturbed expression. A kind of overwhelmingly unperturbed expression that suggested he hadn't even considered once that he might be defeated. That's right. There's no way he would lose. Absolutely not. Fundamentally, Byakuya Sama is a god. Unperturbed? A god? No, I lied. That's not how it is. He's just doing his best. He's just pushing himself too hard. He's such a weak boy. He's such a kind boy. Forget about me. Just get out of here. Everyone's gone crazy. The school gates have been opened. Hello everyone and I hope you enjoyed 
the uh, final episode of Volume 1. Man, we've, we've definitely come a very long way. Uh, now, that was a actually insane uh, read <laughs> uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed doing. So, and then, now let's get on to these translator's notes. Uh, Bakayaro is a movie of a series of vigilantes about people who tolerate everyday social irritations until they hit their breaking point and start chewing people out, with the acclaimed director Yoshimitsu Morita serving as the executive producer. Komenachi, or Komenaki, oh, I'm sorry for the pronunciation. Nadia Komenachi is a gymnast, but the joke was popularized by a Japanese comedian. Uh, it's a gag where you put your hands around your crotch to simulate a gymnast's leotard. I will put a uh, image to show you what it looks like. And Tirol Choco is a cheap brand of chocolate. Uh, Ikameshi is a squid rice dish where the rice is put inside the squid and can actually stay put when it's cut. Uh, Memory Album or Amoide no Album is a Japanese folk song that is used in graduation ceremonies which uh, would have been used in the background for the music. Uh, the sky is blue-black is another quote from uh, Kyusaku Yumano's uh, Ryuki Uta Ode to the Bazaar. And uh, Never Tarnishing is the same. And uh, the Borg skill stuff appear to be Dragon Crest references up until the end. So the um, borrowed the localized skill names uh, instead of the original Japanese sort of skill names just so you, anyone who's played Dragon Quest will find it funnier, I suppose. Uh, Gola de Pret, if, if, you're probably here for the explanation of what this is, but well, I'm not exactly sure what it's referring to. The kanji is Saint's Throat, but the there's like a katakana reading, which is like Kura de Purete, and couldn't really find anything similar to Vyakuya's fake throat here, but at least I decided to gain the Italian Gola de Prete. The priest's throat seemed to be the closest match for the tr stated translation and transliteration combined, which um, pretty much, I think that's what can be pieced together from what Yaku's strategy was, but it, it's still a little bit lost. <laughs> uh, I hope, hope you understand, it's basically just he had like a fake layer of skin over his skin where he had like a little pouch on his neck. Uh, the Spec series is a Japanese TV and movie franchise with lots of mysteries and suspense that has a hyped up and large scale finale that would wrap up everything that ultimately disappointed many fans of the messy ending that stretched uh, credulously and allegedly betrayed the heart of the themes of the previous works. So judging by the cursory online, I think a more widely relatable reference to the audience would be a certain anime installment providing the conclusion to a certain beloved mystery series that defended into controversy and backlash. Uh, the Makeover Takeover pun, in the original this is a play on words with Seifuku, which can be written with many different characters to either mean Uniform, as Sonya uses, or Conquest, as Shinobu initially misunderstands before correcting herself. And the Radio Calisthenic song, which uh, also would have been used um, in the for the music is uh, used over radio broadcast to guide listeners in a daily exercise like how Monokuma encourages in the games uh, the lyrics in this novel are similar to the lyrics of the original but with some noticeable despair differences and uh, if you're a big anime fan you would know that uh, this song is used in the show and manga uh, Gantz um, so a lot of you may have recognized it from Gantz, but it's an actual song that exists outside of it. So yeah, that's the end of Volume 1. Uh, next time will be Volume 2, uh, which doesn't have a current full translation. Uh, volume 3, in fact, is having a full translation done first before Volume 2. Um, so that's going to be pretty exciting. So what I'll probably do is read Volume 2 in the same way kind of what I've been reading these um, but if a full translation comes out I will remake the videos in a full translation version so let's go over the let's go over the loose ends of what volume 1 has left us with so um, the super high school level imposters 24 hour challenge to the people of the world is only 5 hours deep that means there's 19 hours left until uh, the proclamation is over. 
Uh, Otsuki is loose and is trying to kill Takami. Uh, that was something that happened. <laughs> now, a lot of you might be thinking, what did, did Otsuki like drive the Jeep like to from Japan to Prague? And uh, I, I thinking what actually happened was that things were not actually happening simultaneously, but the um, the chapters with uh, Otsuki, the Mole Man version, would def definitely not Fukala ripoff at all. Uh, he 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 was driving from Japan to Prague the whole the whole time before it all happened. Uh, I think I could be wrong. Although otherwise, he just sort of. <laughs> Ended up in Prague because he's a super high school level. Uh, oh, well, I guess Sakura like uses Shikuchi to sort of teleport. And um, if you're wondering, oh, Shikuchi and teleportation—that's a really weird thing for Tagami, well, for Danganronpa. But an actual fact, uh, Danganronpa Zero and Danganronpa If both also have references to Shikuchi as well for uh, not just Sakura but other characters, which I won't spoil just in case you haven't seen those as well. Uh, so. Uh, it's a if if is not canon. It's a canon AU, but it's not canon. But zero is definitely canon. So <laughs> Shikuchi is canon in Dragon Rumper. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so this despair novel is still around, except it's kind of smushed up, been cut up. Um, so what it seems like is that it's a printout sheet. So. Who even knows what's on it, or even if it's the real thing in the first place. So yeah, the, the Spare High School has opened its doors to do whatever they do, which we'll find out. The Hasegawa Institute members are kind of dead, but uh, there's still some poking around, trying to find the secret to the Takami family prosperity. Uh, the fate of Hiroyuki, Yuaka, Taiko and Aoba are unknown. Fukawa is on her way to Prague. Uh, the mystery club members may be split in half, but they plan to turn the world into a big locker room mystery. It's presumably still going, minus the staff club president um, thought Otsuki killed. Um, which, which this, the locker room mystery thing reminds me a lot of um, George Joestar, which I'd say would be basically the equivalent to the JoJo's series that Danganronpa Tagami is to the Danganronpa series, in terms of Pretty much everyone hates it, and a lot of weird, crazy stuff happens. Um, that's even weirder than the main series. Uh, people are putting pressure on Hostpeak Academy and blaming them for the World Domination Proclamation. Hostpeak is also trying to erase any connection they have to the Ultimate Imposter, or Super High of Imposter. The Reserve Course's parade is still ongoing, uh, so it's, it's not like this is set after the parades kill themselves yet, this is still during I'd say, I'd say probably like, it's either set just before Zero, or just after Zero. One of the two, I'm still not exactly sure. Um, but it's, it's during that one weird time skip in DR3 where they don't show you it's a time skip, but you can tell it's a time skip because Junko's clothes changed colour. <laughs> which is basically how you can tell time skips in DR3. Uh, Makuro is missing somewhere, and Junko is eavesdropping on everything that um, Jin and supposedly the steering committee are doing. Uh, now, de depending on if you've read Zero or not, you may want to skip this little bit. Um, but we know that the um, s steering committee all die in DR Zero. Like, the original four members die in DR Zero. But at the end of DR Zero, we know that there are more members that do exist or have been inducted into it. So I'm thinking it's possible that these are like the new steering committee members if it's set after Zero, because that would make the most sense. And we know that sort of Junko had something to do with what um, the new steering committee members were up to. I don't, even, I don't think they actually called the steering committee after that, but I know that there's more members. And uh, even with DR3, we actually did see that there was a a lot, there's a lot, a lot of board of directors, other that we didn't see, but they were the main four. But there were also others as well, which you kind of saw in um, 
I think it was like episode two or three of Despair Arc as well, so that's just a little thing. Okay, spoilers over. Uh, things that were introduced, but we don't know a ton about, just at this moment. Uh, the biggest, worst incident in the history of the Takami family. One of my personal favourite parts of the uh, DRT series, which we will find about uh, next volume. So, hooray. Hope you look forward to that. And uh, hope you look forward to everyone's favourite character that is hated even more than Haiji by everyone who knows about him. And if you, you know, Ultra Despair Girls and you know Haiji, you know... <laughs> you know, it's got to be pretty bad to be worse than Haiji. Uh, and the other thing we're not sure about is the Kudan. Uh, another thing we're also not sure about is what exactly the Despair novel is, and if it's even real or not in the first place, or if it's just one of those big hypnotize-y thingamabobbies. Uh, Shinobu's past with Otsuki, Aoba's reasons to be traveling, and Kirigiri's cryptic message to Tagami, which read, Remember the Past. So that's everything to expect within the next two volumes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little ride. After this, I'll definitely get on to start reading volume two. So anyway, hope you all lovely people had a great time listening to this series. Thank you all so much for joining us on, on this adventure this very bizarre adventure <laughs> um, yeah so have a good day everyone <laughs>